How's it going? My name's Nico. I go by Cointrick and Cointrick Twitch Online. If you want to see more videos like this one, please remember to like and subscribe. Hit that bell so you get notified every time I upload another one of these videos. Hi, hello, welcome everyone. Thank you for tuning in. My name is Nico. I go by Cointrick and Cointrick Twitch Online. And today, I'm already out of breath. Today, I'm going to be grinding uh, some grains. What is that on there? Right there. Oh, that's a little diagram of how this thing works. Well, that's, that's convenient. Camera one, maybe it'll show up on there. It, nope, no luck. There we go. You can kind of see it. It's a, it's a little diagram that just tells you how to put this thing together because it came in pieces. Camera one, feels overexposed to me. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna walk around and fix that because that's gonna bug me. So today, the point of this live stream is that I am going to be making, we're not making beer exactly, but I'm gonna be preparing a bunch of different kinds of grains to make five experimental batches of beer. Yes, all of that sounds correct in my head and coming out of my mouth. So the five grains that we have, and by the way, 22 Johnson and uh, Red Unno, welcome back. Thank you for tuning in, guys. I appreciate it. So we have millet, which has already been hulled. Uh, let me try and dip this thing down, and we'll show you guys camera two so you guys can get a better view. Boop. There we go. That's my microphone. I apologize for that. But we have millet, uh, which is just, it's a, it's a grain. It has extra nutritional value compared to, like, wheat and barley, which is what you would normally make beer out of. Um, we have... I believe this is pronounced farro, not farro, uh, which is actually a kind of grain. Farro uh, or farro refers to just ancient, like a whole species of ancient grain in general. I don't know specifically what subspecies this is, but this is one thing that we have. We also have, I lied, this is the millet, which means this is bulgur, B-U-L-G-U-R. This is millet or millet or however it's pronounced. We also have the the one probably that everyone has heard of. Whoop. Joaquin. I'm kidding. It's that this is quinoa. It's a whole ton of quinoa. And then one that you probably think you've heard of, which is amaranth. A M A R A N T H. Not the live streamer. Soon here we're going to be starting a crowdfunding campaign to make a beer that is going to be a blend of these five and potentially also barley, which is what you would normally have in a beer. The reason we picked these is because they have extra nutritional value compared to barley, which is basically uh, carbs and some like iron and zinc and a few things that your body does need. These five also come very close in their concentration of, uh, of their all of their macronutrients, meaning protein, fat, and carbohydrates. They're very similar in that composition to barley. So the idea is that they should behave the same way if you run them through the same processes that you would run barley through in order to make beer from scratch. They should behave relatively similarly. Um, I know for a fact that you can make beer from farro, but the rest of these I have never heard of. The very first thing that we have to do is mill all of them, and I could make it uh, relatively painless, uh, but if you're new here, you know I don't ever do anything easily um, because I am an idiot. Right next to the handle right there, that is a dial that lets you... You guys will never believe this, but I caught the bag on my foot. I'm not allowed to show you my foot because this is Twitch and Twitch is weird. Um, there's a little dial that lets you basically select how close the two burrs are to one another. I'll show you guys what the burrs are here on camera one again. Probably easier to do on camera two, actually. So, yeah, that's a good shot next to all those grains. So right inside of here, in there, you can't see the burrs actually from this angle, uh, but the burrs basically are these two cylinders that will mash up everything that you put in there. That dial decides how far or close those burrs are from one another. Once you grind these down and you break the hull of uh, everything, all of these grains and stuff, the more finely you make it, the, the easier this process becomes. Uh, then you have to 
basically put it under heat in order to uh, extract those sugars. Otherwise, uh, your yeast will have a harder time converting those into alcohol and uh, carbon dioxide and different things. That process of extraction is very complicated and that's a subject for another video. For now, we're just gonna be grinding these. Uh, once they're extracted, they become uh, essentially malt extracts and then they're ready to be made into beer uh, almost instantly, which is why that has to be done in a separate video. I don't have the time to begin and make all five of these batches from scratch today. I have different sanitized buckets for each one of these five uh, batches and I have a sixth one we're going to make a sixth batch that is just going to be a regular like barley or light malt extract like beer kit uh, and that's going to be our control so we're going to be making one regular beer and then five experimental batches and the only thing that we're changing between each of these batches is that we're going to substitute all of the barley um, and then we're going to be making one regular batch to test everything against because the point of this is to see if you can make a viable beer that has some of these extra nutritional values uh, from these extra grains that retains all of that flavor that you want from your beer in the first place. Should I open a beer now? I feel like I know what the answer to this question is going to be. Should I open a beer now or should I wait until I've uh, <laughs> done any modicum of work? Oh, that tastes better every time I try it. One quick aside. I'll pick that up in a minute. If you look here, you'll see that looks very, very fine. It almost looks like sand. So the amaranth may not be super cooperative in, in this experiment. And if that happens, that means I'm just gonna have to grind it again and again and again and again until I like where it's at. Uh, absolute worst case scenario means that I have to run this through something like a coffee grinder, uh, which can get very, very fine, like the way that you would make espresso. I don't want to do that because I anticipate it gumming up uh, a grinder like that. So just for comparison's sake, you see those, those like much more defined, uh, like bigger individual grains. This is the bulgur. So this is probably gonna be a lot easier to grind up. Uh, I'm kind of worried that the amaranth is just gonna shoot straight through the grinder here. The very first thing I need to do is make sure that I have this set as fine as it will go. I am gonna start with this one because I think it's gonna be the easiest one to do. God help me. Oh, there, that's a good sign. We've got resistance here. Oh, it's so easy. You could do this with a power drill? probably really loud on the mic actually. Yeah, there we go. The hills are alive with the sound of bad decisions. There's so much of this. What if I did it this way? What if I turned it away, did it left-handed? I feel like that's just as loud. Such a lovely noise. So these you, can, you may be able to tell. The chunks are a little bit bigger and there are fewer of them. This is the same weight, just smaller pieces. But um, there's, I don't have a camera that is gonna get close enough uh, with enough resolution to show you guys this. The pieces are getting just barely smaller. But the point is actually to break the hull of these grains individually so that the sugars can express more easily uh, once you expose them to heat. So all of that being said, I think I'm probably gonna have to run these twice and I may cave and get a, a, a drill or something that will do it electronically. Uh, if for no other reason than I hate the sound of that squeaky wheel. Oh God, I wish Dylan was here. Oh. 